as you know, there's been so much interest in cryptocurrencies, specifically today where we're looking at Bitcoin at a 2018 high, back above 9,300. What do you think is behind this recent rebound? I think people are realizing that Bitcoin, blockchain, there's real value there. I think in 2017, it was all about um, sort of the run up, the get rich quick, wow, you can double, triple, quadruple your money. Um, then I think there was a pullback to say, okay, what are the real applications of cryptocurrency and blockchain technology? And I think we're going to see a surge now around people really understanding the potential for the technology. How important is it for the traditional banks like a Goldman Sachs to play a, a more substantive, substantive role in cryptocurrencies in order for them to flourish? Can Bitcoin continue to move higher without the presence of these big banks that play a meaningful role in the means of payment? Big banks are in a really interesting situation where some of them, for some of their the products that they offer, may get disintermediated. Let's take the, the uh, um, underdeveloped world for, for a moment here. Um, they miss the whole landline telephone experience, skipping directly from no phones to mobile phones, right? They leapfrog. I think the underdeveloped world has an opportunity to do, to do the same with their financial systems, many of which are broken, central banks are corrupt, and so rather than go through the traditional central bank system that we have in the developed world, in the US as an example, they skip that and go directly to a crypto-based economy whereby uh, the, there's no central bank, there's peer-to-peer -peer transactions among untrusted players, and there is a ledger which records all of these transactions. In the US, it's probably gonna have less of an impact mm -hmm. than, than in underdeveloped countries. But I think here in the US, there are still a lot of application, financial applications that don't necessarily need these large bank or traditional financial players. We're kind of surpassing the traditional banks. So talk to us about Comcast Ventures. Where are you guys trying to put money to work in this new industry? We're very excited about cryptocurrency and blockchain. So irrespective of the price of Bitcoin, unfortunately, if it's at $10,000 or $10, we still think that there's core technology there that has the potential to disrupt many industries. Right? If you look at the three main principles of blockchain around identity, around um, this, this uh, immutable ledger, so the ledger of all the transactions, and then these, this decentralized control mechanism there, it has the potential to disrupt um, existing players, social media, content distribution, uh, e-commerce. If we look at Internet 1.0, if you will, the Internet of the 90s and early 2000s was about how do we connect people? Uh, but it didn't solve the trust problem, so we, we, uh, uh, we formed these aggregators that would uh, connect uh, buyers and sellers together um, and and these aggregators would reap the profits now with blockchain technology that's not necessary sure. buyers and sellers can connect to each other in a trusted fashion without a central player so I think there are a lot of new business models that we haven't even seen yet um, which, which we developed and which companies are, are you looking at to put money and you've already invested in some we've already startups. invested yeah so we've been, one company we invested in is a picks and shovel company called Block Daemon. And what Block Daemon does is they provide blockchain as a service. So if a company, enterprise, business wants to launch a blockchain node, or they want to launch a, uh, a, a node on an existing blockchain, um, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, they go to Block Daemon and press a couple buttons and immediately they spun up infrastructure. That allows for companies to not have to worry about infrastructure and immediately be, be able to build applications on top of it. In total, how many blockchain startups has Comcast Ventures invested in? Four. And how much do you see that? Will that increase and by how much by the end of the year? I think it's definitely going to increase. We're seeing tons of companies uh, uh, around infrastructure, um, applications, social networks, content delivery, 
we think there's a lot of opportunity. Also, within Comcast and NBC Universal, there are a lot of really interesting projects going around on uh, IoT security, um, advertising, identity. So, by being close to the business units, we see real business folks, real developers trying to tackle real problems with the technology. So investments are clearly being made in it, but when does blockchain start to have an actual impact on real life? When do I start seeing interacting with it on a regular basis? It may be a little while. I think blockchain is still looking for that killer app. We're not there yet. Some folks have said that um, we're in early innings. I think we're more like in the pregame. If you've ever been to a football game and you see folks in the parking lot with the barbecues, drinking and all, I think we're more at that phase where the rules of the game haven't been established yet, um, the, uh, the team players are not there, um, you know, still basic infrastructure around the technology um, hasn't arrived yet. So I think it may be a year or two before we start to see folks move from replicating existing um, uh, social networks, e-commerce players, content distribution, taking existing models and try applying it to blockchain, to then doing things that weren't even possible uh, and inventing new applications, killer applications. I think, I haven't seen that yet, otherwise I would have invested in it, but, but I think it's going to be a little while. How does Comcast Ventures view blockchain? Are they super bullish on this space? Are they looking to raise a separate fund to invest specifically in blockchain? How do you guys plan on you know, playing a leadership role in this new technology? We have four partners at the firm who are focused on blockchain as part of their work. Um, so we're looking at it from technology point of view, uh, BDP Enterprise, which is what I'm working on. You have another partner that's looking at digital media, another at consumer. So we're taking it seriously. We're going to continue investing out of the main fund um, and look for uh, opportunities. One thing we're still having a little bit of problem with is on valuations. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of these ICOs that are valuing these companies at the hundreds of millions and all they have is some, uh, you know, a great team uh, and a nice white paper, but, but that's it. We're happy to pay $100 million valuations for companies that have a real product, some real customers, some real traction, some revenue as well. So we're trying to figure out how does venture play in this new world where we have initial coin offerings, token-based economies, and trying to figure out how do we value these companies? Because these valuations are more like valuing an economy than valuing a business. And so what does that mean when you're investing in a, an economy that are going to have multiple players and multiple businesses that might be built on top of that protocol? That's really interesting. There's also been a lot of talk here at the conference about the impact uh, blockchain can have on politics, uh, specifically in some of the upcoming elections, especially after what happened in the U.S. presidential election, uh, using blockchain to add more accuracy and efficiency to elections, specifically in Brazil, Mexico, and Colombia, which are all coming up. Uh, what are your thoughts on the impact that this technology can have there? So I think, I think blockchain is a perfect platform for voting. The, the underlying technology around identity, first and foremost, where someone comes to a voting booth and uses a, use a cryptographic key to identify themselves, um, uh, prevents uh, multiple voting. You can ensure that, that the transaction um, is recorded on this immutable ledger, which we've been talking about in blockchain. Um, and then also another aspect is around decentralized control. So there's no single party, single entity that is counting um, all of the, uh, uh, the votes, but rather having um, a widespread decentralized system for counting where each one of them are double checking the other counts. So I think it's a great application. Uh, are you worried that ICOs will disrupt the IPO model one day? I think it has the potential to do that. I think we're still figuring out where ICOs fit. Um, first and foremost, we need to get the regulation right. Sure. So the, the, the SEC, I know that they're looking at it, they're trying to understand, um, you know, are these tokens um, uh, investment vehicles, and if so, they need to be regulated. 
I think that they eventually will be regulated, and this will be another aspect, sort of a, um, a lower friction way for companies to raise capital. But I don't think it's yet going to disrupt the venture model. Uh, probably, folks don't understand this, but probably the least valuable thing a VC brings to the table is money. And money is a commodity. All VCs have it. It's really the value that we add on top of that um, in um, helping the team that go to market strategy and product and hiring, et cetera. I think those are the things where we add the most amount of value. And through an ICO where you're getting a lot of money, but maybe not a lot of help, uh, there's still room for VCs to bring that investment and that expertise to help accelerate companies. Uh, lastly, you know, the, on the other topic of politics, the trade uncertainty around NAFTA, also tariffs, that's of course been a big part of the discussion. How has that impacted uh, the VC model, if at all, looking at investments in some of these regions that could potentially be facing not only trade uncertainty, but uh, tariffs? Has that changed the way you look for opportunity? It's certainly on our radar. Uh, we have made investments in China and India, and we're looking for, uh, obviously, ways to help those companies, help them get big, uh, potentially exit someday. Um, if there are tensions between the different countries, uh, it may slow growth uh, for some of those companies. It also might make it difficult to, for us to continue to invest in those countries. And then also, upon exit, how do we repatriate uh, some of the profits, hopefully. So would you say that's a major concern for VCs right now? It is a concern, not necessarily major concern. Our focus at Comcast Ventures is primarily in the U.S., looking for great consumer and B2B enterprise companies in the U.S. A small fraction of our, our fund is in India and China, so not yet a, a big issue for us. But Latin America as well? Uh, not yet. Okay. Not yet. Uh, but what would you say is the biggest risk right now for, what do you view as the biggest risk right now when looking at Washington? I think there's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, uncertainty around how um, the current administration, how their policies are going to roll out, um, for better or, or for worse. Uh, I think we need clear direction and vision when it comes to economic policy, when it comes to trade policy, when it comes to regulation. And I think as those things settle down and the, the playing field is set, um, I think we'll have a much better opportunity to find opportunities and invest in them. So for the average retail investor that wants to get in on either cryptocurrencies or invest in blockchain, what are some of the risks out there? What should they be careful about? This is more like investing in high risk commodities. If you're not comfortable in prices changing 5, 10, 20% a day and that, and that volatility in your portfolio um, can't handle that sort of stress, then, it's, then, then Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies is probably not right for you yet. It may be right for a small fraction of your portfolio, but I would not put more than, let's say, 5% of your portfolio into cryptocurrencies or token-based economies. They're still volatile, they're still unproven. Many of them are um, still figuring out, still building the platforms uh, to make those currencies valuable. Uh, so I would say use a lot of caution um, and um, make sure it's a small part of your portfolio today. Gil, this was great, uh, really wide-ranging, so thank you. Thank With you pleasure, time. thank you. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.